On the moral cultural issues, there's nobody who's been out front more on the issue of life. I authored the Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act and fought it, and again, got my yeah. support. <laughs> the Born Alive Infant Protection Act, the Unborn Victims of Violence Act, every major pro-life bill, I was either the author or the floor leader or both. When it comes to the family, I wrote a book in response to Hillary Clinton's book. Her book was called It Takes a Village. Yeah. Mine was called It Takes a Family. And I wrote a book on the importance of marriage and the family and went out and fought those battles. I know you have fought those battles here in California, but I was fighting them even before you fought them in California. We didn't always win, but we never backed down from the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been there on moral cultural issues, I've been there on economic issues, and on national security issues. I've served eight years on the Armed Services Committee, helped transform the Defense Department from a big, heavy force focused on the land war in Europe to a force that was more agile and mobile to respond to what we call asymmetric threats, which we now call terrorism, prior to 9-11. I was the author of two major pieces of legislation dealing with the state of Israel. One called the Syrian Accountability Act, which George Bush and Colin Powell opposed to try to get Syria out of Lebanon with sanctions. He opposed it until I, would, I kept pounding away at it. And eventually he agreed and we signed it. And within a month after we signed that bill, Syria was out of love. I also for, uh, fought on uh, the Iran Freedom Support Act. In 2004, I came forward and said, Iran has an active nuclear program, even though the CIA said it to stop. We had information that said otherwise. I proposed to build a put sanctions on their nuclear program and fund a pro-democracy movement which the CIA said did not exist. I was opposed by President Bush and Secretary Rice. I brought the bill to the floor in 2006 after it passed the House. And I was blocked by none other than Joe Biden. If you want to know what position to take to be right in foreign policy, find out what Biden thinks. <laughs> blocked us in June of 2006. The administration was negotiating with Iran at the time. Secretary Rice and the President told me they would not block the bill. They would take a neutral stance. Until the day of the vote, I got a letter that morning that Joe Biden had before me that Condi Rice opposed it. And we lost by three votes. Within four months, we passed it once it became clear that Iran was exactly what I said they were, a country in pursuit of a nuclear weapon, which they cannot, under any circumstances, get, and will not. Final point. Everybody wants to win. You think I'm running because I don't think I can win? Look at my election history. Look at the other two guys who are running for, who are the quote, big guys in the field. Mitt Romney, how many races has he won? One. He served four years and didn't even bother to run for re-election. Now he says, well, I've only spent one term, I'm a private sector guy. Why? Because he lost his other races. <laughs> and when he ran against Ted Kennedy, he did not run as a conservative. He tried to run to the left of Kennedy. Look at the other big dog in the hunt. In the hunt, he ran half of his campaigns successfully in Texas as a Democrat. And then when the things changed in Texas, guess who changed? And he ran as a Republican. But this is a man who is going to be at the Reagan Library, and he voted for Jimmy Carter and. After Reagan ran Al Gore's campaign in Texas. So you want to look at someone who has electoral history in a state, no offense to California, but in a state we can win. In a state we can win, and if we do win, then the Republicans will, will get the, will, Republicans will be 
the next the Republican will be the next president, and that's Pennsylvania. That's where my state is. I've won that state. I've won a blue state, a tough blue state, twice. Once against the Democratic incumbents. The second time, George Bush lost the state by four. I won it by five. It was the only conservative elected in the state that Bush lost. In my two House races that I won, the first time I ran, I beat a Democratic incumbent. Second time I ran, it was a redistricting year like this one. I was put against a 24-year Democratic incumbent. I retired him. The first three races, three Democratic incumbents, three and up. No one else in that stage has defeated a Democratic incumbent. No one else is from a state that we can win or that we shouldn't win no matter who runs. If you want to win Pennsylvania, Ohio, if you win either of those states, we win. Right now, in the most recent poll in Pennsylvania, Obama and I are in a dead heat. We have an opportunity to win with a principled conservative who's actually gotten success in Washington, D.C. And I need your help. So if you can go and help us out, go to my website, ricksantorm.com, sign up, write a little contribution, five, ten, twenty, I don't care what it is, send us something. Every little bit helps. Talk to your friends and neighbors. And you can. You can do something that folks here in California don't get a chance to do. The mainstream media has decided who the two candidates they're for. They always do that. There was a report out last week that showed all of the press coverage for over the last six months of all the candidates. Guess which candidate got the least amount of press coverage? Rick Santorum. <laughs> no, not Ron Paul. Rick Santorum. I am the only person in the Gallup poll over the last six months whose name recognition of all the candidates running for president, even thinking of running for president, didn't change. It didn't change a bit. I wonder why they're ignoring me. I wonder why they're putting up other candidates. I was dead even with Tim Pawlenty in every national poll. The most recent one that came out, I'm tied with Newt Gingrich ahead of Herman Cain and John Huntsman. I get less coverage than any of them. So 